Arunang karuna tarangitakshi Drita pasang kusha pushpa bana chapam Anima di biravritam mayukai Raham mityeva vibhava ye bhava Srimadvad Bhavakutaika Swarupa Mukapankaja Kantadha Kati Paryanta Madhyakuta Swarupini Shakti Kutaika Tapanna Katyadho Bhagadharini Mula mantratmika mula kutatraya kalebara. Namaste. So, today we start on a new section of Lalita Sahasranam. Up until now, the Namas have discussed her physical form, her beautiful female form from the head to the feet and then discussed how she killed Bandasura with her assistance. So now this new section is going to be about her mantra form. This is her subtle form. She has three subtle forms. The subtle form, the subtler form, and the subtlest form. So today we're going to talk about her subtle form and her subtler form. And these are embodied in the Maha Sodashi Mantra. Part of the Sodashi Mantra is the Panchadashi Mantra. And we discussed all of this in very, very great detail in a prior series. So instead of trying to tell it all here, I'm going to refer you to that series. Here's the link. And you can take a look at that to have the proper background to understand what we're talking about today. Otherwise, <laughs> you're not going to get the points that we're talking about because we're going to use the terminology derived from the mantra. Okay, so here we go. Shri Madhvag Bhava Kutaika Svarupa Mukha Pankaja. So the subtle form, as I said, has three divisions subtle, subtler, and subtlest. And the subtle form is the Panchadashi Mantra. Panchadashi Mantra has three parts or kutas. And Mahashodashi, the center of it, the heart of it, are the three kutas. So the three kutas begin with the Vagbhava Kuta. Vagbhava Kuta describes her head, her face, neck, head, crown, and the whole top of her body, like that. So the subtle form is Panchadashi Mantra. The subtler form is the Kamakala. Kamakala Rupa. Kamakala is the Bija Ing. And of course, the Bija Ing is hidden in most of the Bijas in the Shodashi Mantra. So, this is what makes the mantra effective the Kamakala. Kamakala is the Shakti, the Mantra Shakti, that makes the other Bija mantras or Mula mantras successful. Her face comprises the first kuta, Vagbhava kuta. This gives knowledge and wisdom. And there's the prefix Srimad. Srimad means that this is the power, the power of the mantra as a whole. ka e i la This is a very powerful kuta 
the first kuta or Vagbhava kuta of the Panchadashi mantra, which is the heart of the Shodashi mantra. Now you see, you have to go back and look at that other series, otherwise you're not going to know what I'm talking about. <laughs> the Srimad here also indicates the respect uh, given to this mantra, because this mantra is the root, the mula, of all the other mantras in the Sri Vidya. Next, Kantada Katiparyanta Madhyakuta Swarupine. She is in the form of the Madhyakuta, or the middle line of the Panchdashi mantra. Hasakahala Ring. Hasakahala Ring. These are very deep. The meanings are really esoteric. So you really have to watch the other series, huh? So you know what we're talking about here. And this describes the part of her form between the face and uh, the hips. So her shoulders, breasts, belly, and uh, lower part of the body are described here. So while the previous mantra gives the jnana shakti, the previous kuta, gives the jnana shakti, this nama gives the icha shakti, or the will, the divine desire that results in the creation, and of which she is the complete expression. And then the next nama represents the kriya shakti. Shakti kutaikata panna katya dobhagadharini. This represents the Shakti Kuta, the last of the three Kutas, which represents the bottom part of her body and legs and feet. Now, even her feet are extremely powerful because she is the, the greatest Shakti of all. She's the source of all the other Shaktis. And she is the one who gives the gods their powers. So, even her feet are so powerful that just by remembering them, uh, Sakala Ring, that's the, the Shakti Kuta. The Shakti Kuta is only these three syllables, but it has so much power and so much benediction. So, moving on. Mula Mantratmika. Mula means root. And Mula Mantra means a root mantra. These are the mantras that give the power, the Shakti, to all the other mantras. For example, all Vedic mantras, without exception, begin and end with Aum. Aum is a root mantra, a Mula Mantra. It's the Mula Mantra of Brahman. So Brahman, of course, contains everything. But if we want to get the powers of Shakti or utilize the powers of Shakti or call upon her, invoke her uh, as part of our rituals or sadhana or whatever in meditation, then we have to use her Mula Mantras. And her Mula Mantras are given in the Mahashodashi Mantra. So these are the Mula Mantras, okay? These are the roots of all the powers of the different mantras that are used in the Sri Vidya and in the Vedic path. So here's where all the power is, folks. Huh? This is the gas. <laughs> and you take the other mantras and enclose them in these Mula mantras, and this gives them tremendous power. Mula Kuta Traya Kalebara. Triya means three. There were three kutas. They have been mentioned in the mantras above. These mantras, again, they are the sources of power. They are the roots. If you cut a tree, most of the time the tree will regrow as long as you don't cut the root. But if you cut the root, the tree is finished. <laughs> it won't grow back. So in the same way, if you even forget everything else about Vedic lore and mantras and 
so on and so forth. But somehow or other, you remember this root mantra, this Panchadashi mantra or Shodashi mantra, then everything will come to you because she is everything. <laughs> So when you invoke her by means of these mula mantras, these three kutas, the three kuta, then all of her powers come become at your disposal, consciously. Now, it is true that in the between lives state, because we are divorced from the body and eventually even from the mind, we attain the state of shivoham, Shiva state. But because we do so unconsciously and with desire, still clinging to the desires from the previous life, what happens is that we invoke Shakti, but we do so in ignorance. And this results in another body and another birth, another process of becoming, as described in the uh, the Buddha's teaching of Paticca Samuppada. And this keeps us going in the round of birth and death indefinitely. So the whole point of chanting these mantras is to invoke this Shakti consciously and to approach her with the desire of let me attain self-realization. I don't want another body. I don't want another life. <laughs> I don't want to go around this birth and death anymore. So let me use this privilege that she gives us because we are Brahman, remember. Deep down under all the upadis and amongst all the vasanas all mixed up in the mind, uh, we are actually unconditioned awareness, Brahman. So we have the privilege to use the Shaktis. But when we approach her with desire, when we have leftover vasanas from the previous life, then we trap ourselves. We desire another life in which to uh, satisfy those desires. And that leads to so much suffering and pain. So instead, we approach her consciously deliberately with knowledge saying I have no desire there's nothing I want I want only to be without action without consciousness pure awareness objectless awareness of the self and when we do that of course she will award that to us so this is the key to self-realization this is the key to success in spiritual life. The subtle form, the subtler form, and the subtlest form are the three forms of Shakti that we worship when we chant these mantras. And her subtlest form is the Kundalini form. And in the next mantras, in the next Namas, we'll get into the description of that form. In fact, mantras or namas, quite a few of them, 90 through 111. So there are 21 namas that describe her kundalini form. And these are very, very deep and powerful ideas. Uh, you have to understand the chatur darshanam, the four views, levels of consciousness. And you have to understand the seven chakras. So this is the background knowledge. And uh, you should also have knowledge of, and even better, be initiated into the Shodashi Mantra, because that contains all of the powerful bijas that enable you to invoke the Kundalini and achieve anything you desire. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.